Hello, welcome back to Marathon Garage, where we believe in running away from our problems. Let's see, key in, runs to the interlock relay, okay, goes to the seatbelt interlock system, okay, mm-hmm, makes sense, all right, then seatbelt warning buzzer relay, yep, circles around the muffler, goes to the door switch, all right, got it. Okay, then we turn it to ignition, then to start. Start will run to the X relay. What the hell? The X relay activates the heater, deactivates the heater, deactivates the headlights. What the hell is going on? Bolt check relay? What? No. This is a 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit diesel 1.6 liter OEM stock factory wiring harness. And this is the Greg Mini Ignition Starter Kit. That's right. We are building a completely utilitarian vehicle. Now you may say, well, that doesn't do everything that did. Sure, but we also don't need a lot of the jazz that that thing did or claimed to do and only caused headaches. So I've made this very simple. This is a three wire harness, okay? And the purpose of today's video is to do a proof of concept on the Volkswagen ignition switch. This is a little bit different than what I'm used to. For instance, when you simply put the key in the ignition, it already has a circuit just by inserting the key. I would equate that to something like accessory perhaps on a GM. Then we switch it on. This is ignition on the whole pin 15, T15 thing. And then there is that momentary click for start, okay? That's exactly what we need. But we don't need to wire one, two, three, four, five wires to that when three will do. One thing to point out is, once I click it on start once, this is really cool. It doesn't allow me to do it again. I have to turn off the ignition and then start over. On and then momentary. That is cool, I really like that. Okay, gentlemen, so let's talk about what we have here. This ignition switch is what I would refer to as a system. A system meaning that it has input, it has output, and then it has to do something in order to be a system. It has to have some sort of a process, make some sort of a change, okay? I don't wanna to preach to you guys about data storage versus uh, process or a system, but if something goes into something and just comes out with no change, that is just storage. I'm not saying a system is better than storage, there's a need for both, but just a little tangent that this is a system. System needs to have input. So we start the input with this pretty thick gauge. I don't know what this is. Maybe like a 10, 10 gauge, maybe a 12. And this is going to be our input. So red wire comes in here and this is our input. And in the vehicle, it has something called a fusible link. This is gonna to run to our bench power supply. We're gonna put a bench power supply here and what I have here is simply a 5 amp fuse. One of the things that I didn't like on the stock impl implementation is how much current they were sending through this ignition switch. There's absolutely no need to run your car heater through the ignition switch or your headlights through the ignition switch. This thing just runs relays and it's a mechanical cutoff for the oh shit moment to turn off your car. But I don't need to run 20 amps, 25 amps, 30, 40 amps through this switch. So I have a five amp fuse. None of my electronic components themselves draw five amps, but collectively they may get up to that. This in the car may get replaced with something like a 10, but each one of my electronic components draws about an amp or two, okay? But this is protected with a five amp fuse. And then after that, what we have is 
I am changing my coloring scheme a little bit. This is the ignition wire on the Zombie. If you follow my videos, we were doing white for uh, ignition, I think. Well, here I'm going to do uh, black just because that matches uh, VW's color scheme and I don't want to confuse myself. So this is going to be key on. It's going to be the black wire. And then there is a black and red, again, matching the VW color scheme. Whereas on mine, this was pink, but that's okay. And that goes on to the start pin, okay? So eventually I'm going to buy an aftermarket connector here, and these are not going to be pinned like this in the car, okay? This is proof of concept bench wiring bench test. And I wanna take this opportunity to point out to you a different idea of inline fuses. These are kind of neat. They're, they're what I call barrel fuses, but what's cool is they can also work as a quick disconnect for you, okay? If you need to tether both sides sort of permanently, you can disconnect by just screwing them in. Be careful that this is sort of a, a mini fuse and not like the full length. So this is like a shorty, okay? Again, we're rocking with the one amp fuses. If we blow them, we'll stick in twos. So I have a fuse on the output two wires. The ignition wire is output and the start wire is output out of the ignition switch. They are protect, they, these fuses are protecting the VCU, whereas this fuse is protecting the ignition. The point of all this is that we need to connect this stuff to the zombie. So let's bring out the zombie. You've all seen the zombie before and uh, something that I did finally is I just wrote top on here with a silver sharpie. You can use blue tape if you want. Uh, I'm not worried about writing on this because the way this will mount is going to be like that. This my hand being the firewall of the car, so we won't even see that. But I'm not too proud to label even if it's like this. I'd rather have an ugly written label on here and not fry this thing than have an oh shit moment. Okay. So we will wire the output from this ignition to the zombie, okay? And I also did my thing where I, now I'm using the proper uh, connectors here, uh, terminals, whatever they're called, and they're also shrink wrapped, right? And the way I did these, there's two of them, but I can't screw the wrong one into the other because One's, uh, I guess this is a male on this side and the other one would be a female. So this is just something I did to not mix these up for whatever reason. Okay, so those will go to the zombie. We need a power supply, so I'll bring that up. Okay, so I'll turn it on. And I will just make sure that it's um, 13 volts. This has volume knobs so we can adjust it. And I always forget which one's coarse, which one's fine for how much you want to adjust. I like to put it just at, as close to 13 as I can. Okay, so that's going to be putting out 13 volts. This simulates a uh, regular car battery. Okay. And we bring out our trusty little laptop. The laptop is here to show us what the zombie state is, whether it's off, whether it's run, you know, um, it doesn't really show on, if you will. I wish it did. We'll, we'll get to that once we have everything fired up. So we, were, we will start off by once again reviewing how to power up the, the zombie. We're using our two wire harness here. There's a red with a fuse, one amp. No need for alligator clip, I just happen to have it. The pins, 56 pins are number one through 28, 29 through 56. The very last bottom pin with the lid up, the last pin on here is pin 56, and that gets positive 12 volts. The one right next to it is pin 55. It gets the black wire. This is DC. Black is negative, red is positive. 
you guys all know that. Okay, and then we will connect the negative to the negative on the battery terminal. Make sure that stays away from everything. Okay, then we will connect the positive of the zombie to the positive, okay? And at this point, this is already on, okay? This is what I call standby. And so it's got permanent power. This is how it sits in the car while you're in the kitchen eating dinner. At this point, it's already advertising its Wi-Fi network. Well, if you give it power, And there it is, ferry link, no internet, but that's exactly what we want. It's set to auto connect. The software for it, uh, address 192.168.4.1 is set to my home page. And the section we want is called spot values, which is sort of like monitoring or reporting feature. Okay, so we're seeing stuff on here, output of the, of the zombie burger. First line says version 2.05a. Second line says op mode, operational mode, off. Okay, fine. Let's turn this off. We don't wanna add any wires to this thing with the power being on. So we are going to continue on here. We're going to wire up the ignition, which is black wire, and that is pin 15. Pin 15 is on top here, first one. So it's one through 14, 15 through 28. So that's the first one, T15. That is our ignition pin. This is the black wire with a one amp fuse. So this is a test of the ignition switch, okay? Make sure that is off. Notice I haven't connected the main power yet, even though that is off. Okay, next is our start. Start is black and red and that goes to pin 52. And so it's 56, 55, 54, 53, 52. Fifth one over from the bottom from my end here. Okay, so now we will connect the power to the ignition switch. So now everything is wired up. So I have no buttons here. I don't have a toggle switch. I don't have a momentary button. This is all driven by this guy here, okay? Okay guys, so we're about to do our test. Everything is wired up. Something you can do on here that's a nice feature that instead of constantly clicking on refresh, we can toggle this switch that says auto. This auto means auto refresh. So once we click on auto, the system will try to update uh, itself on a certain interval. So we're going to turn on power. And first thing I'm going to go in here and check if the network for the zombie is advertising itself. Okay, it is, it's very linked and it's connected, no internet, but that's what we want. So then we go to a web browser. I'm happy, happen to be using Edge. It doesn't matter which one you use. And it is uh, said to be my homepage. We want to go to spot values. Spot values are like the output or output from the zombie. And um, it's like monitoring or reporting. So we're going to go to spot values make sure we have auto on because we want to see this happen uh, automatically for us and not have to manually refresh. Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn the key to the ignition on position. So this is just one click. And one of the issues I have with this interface, and this is just being picky, is that the op mode, I wish at this point would turn change to on or say ignition or say something like ignition on. It doesn't change, okay? So the ignition uh, is now on, but we have no feedback. Um, 
I know in the car, the gauges light up, things start beeping and chirping and so on. But when we're doing something like a bench test, it will be helpful to know that we changed modes. Okay, now I'm gonna do a momentary click. And let's see if that will refresh and put the up mode into run. Ah, it did it by itself, okay. Okay, so we are now in auto ref refresh still. Now I'm gonna turn off the ignition. And the up mode will automatically uh, turn off. Okay, let's turn off auto refresh. So we just learned about a new feature. The progress here went away. And I like that it gives us some sort of feedback that we're really in auto refresh even though you know there's a checkbox. Okay, so yeah, again, I wish the op mode went from off to on to run, then to off. Guys, uh, I hope uh, that this video was beneficial. I like making this stuff, uh, learning about this type of ignition switch, and I'm just sharing with you guys. This is the beginning of a little mini series on how I'm gonna wire the rabbit myself. I will do an entire wiring harness. I'm not gonna buy something like painless. I really don't like where you have, like on the original, there's, I think, four, four columns of seven fuses. So there's 28 fuses, and I doubt we're using half. I really don't like that. And it's not that I couldn't handle the complexity of that very complex system for a little car. It's I couldn't deal with the bulkness and the intertwinedness of all the wires. I really... Uh, had nowhere to put them now that somebody deleted the dash in that car. We need to hide this wiring harness somewhere. So we will build up our wiring harness. We're gonna have brakes, reverse lights, headlights, tail lights, so on, windshield wipers, all of that in due time. But we'll take baby steps and I'll show you how I'm building up this uh, fuse block and the relays and everything one step at a time. Thanks guys for watching.